when we started learning algebra we used variables to represent unknowns then we formed expressions using those variables and now we can equate these expressions and solve for the unknowns so let us see how we can use algebra to solve for unknowns in our everyday life problems philip bought two books from the market for rupees 260 he does not remember the price of the books but remembers that one book costs rupees 20 more than the other what is the cost of each book well philip bought two books and he forgot the price of the books but he remembered that one is 20 more one cost 20 more than the other so if philip has learned algebra well he can very easily use algebra to solve for the price of the two books how can he do it let's see so the first thing is to determine what is the unknown or what do we require to find so philip wants to find the price of the books so there are two books so say there is a book 1 and book 2 so price of book 1 is unknown and price of book 2 is unknown these two are unknowns so let us represent price of book 1 by a variable x so price of book 1 is unknown and we have represented it by a variable x now what about the price of book 2 Do we know anything about the price of book 2? Well, Philip remembers that one book costs rupees 20 more than the other. So there is a relation between the price of two books. Let us assume that book 1 is the cheaper book. So book 1 is the cheaper book. one book cost rupees 20 more than the other so book 2 cost rupees 20 more than book 1 so book 2 costs x plus 20 so price of book 2 is x plus 20 if the price of book 1 is x because one book cost 20 more than the other so we have represented the unknown quantities using the variable so we are done with the first part of the problem now what else is given to us philip bought two books for rupees 260 so this is another information with philip that the total price of the books is rupees 260 he knows this now can we represent the total price using the variable so that we can form an equation and then solve for the variables well yes this is the price of one book this is the price of the other book so what will be the total price of both the books it will be the sum of these two that is x plus x plus 20 this will be the total price of the two books x plus x plus 20 and these two should be equal because this represents the total price of the books even this represents the total price of the books this is a constant and this is our assumed value of the book x and x plus 20 so the next step is to equate these two so we equate these two and form an equation observe that it is a linear equation in one variable and we have already learned how to solve a linear equation in one variable so we can solve it and find the value of x so x plus x gives us 2x and we have 20 2x plus 20 is equal to 260 this implies 2x is equal to we transpose plus 20 to the right hand side and write it as negative 20 260 minus 20 or 2x is equal to 240 now 
we take this 2 and transpose it to the right hand side. So we get x is equal to 240 by 2 which is 120. So we get x is equal to 120. So this is the value of x. Now what was x? We have assumed x to be the price of book 1. That is the price of the cheaper book. So the price of book 1 is rupees 120. What about the other book? The other book is x plus 20. That is 120 plus 20. So it is 120 plus 20 which is equal to 140. So the price of the other book is rupees 140. So one book cost rupees 120, the other book cost rupees 140. Now you can verify it and see whether it satisfies the conditions given in the problem. So Philip bought two books from the market for rupees 260. So check whether the sum of the prices is 260. 120 plus 140 is 260. So yes, that condition is satisfied. He does not remember the price of the books, but remembers that one book costs rupees 20 more than the other. So yes, this book indeed costs rupees 20 more than the other. So even this condition is satisfied. So these are the correct values for the prices of two books, rupees 120 and 140. Now we have another problem. Bill has a rectangular garden of perimeter 342 meters. The length of the garden is two times that of its breadth. What is the length and the breadth of the garden? As we have learned, the first thing is to determine what are the unknowns or what do we require to find. So in this case, we need to find length and the breadth. So we need to find length and breadth of the garden. So these are the unknowns. Breadth, length. Now let us represent them using variable. So let us assume breadth to be x. So breadth is assumed to be x. Now if we assume breadth to be x, what will be the length? Length of the garden is 2 times that of its breadth. So length is 2 times breadth. That is 2 times x. So length is 2 into x which is equal to 2x. This is the length of the garden. So if the breadth is x, length is 2x. Now alternatively we could have taken length to be x. We can take any, any of these. We have taken breadth to be x here. But we could also have taken length to be x. If we take length to be x, then by this condition, that length is 2 times that of the breadth. Breadth will be x by 2. And we can continue using these variables. So x by 2 for breadth and x for length. We can solve this problem using this. We'll get the same answer in both the cases. But the only thing is that we avoid dealing with fractions. So we take breadth to be x and length to be 2x. Now the next step is to see what else is given to us. It is given that the perimeter of the garden is 342 meters. So perimeter is 342 meters. Now can we find the perimeter using these variables? Yes, we can. We know that perimeter is 2 into length plus breadth. We have represented length and breadth in terms of the unknown. So length is 2x and breadth is x. So this is the perimeter. 2 into 2x plus x. Now 
even this is the perimeter this is the perimeter so we can equate these two so let us equate these two 2 into 2x plus x is equal to 342 this is a linear equation in one variable and we can solve this to find the value of x so 2x plus x is 3x 2 into 3x is equal to 342 Two into three x is six x is equal to three forty two. X is equal to three forty two divided by six. So x is equal to three forty two divided by six, which is equal to six into five is thirty. So we have four here. Four. So forty two six into seven is forty two. so we get x is equal to 57 x is equal to 57 now we have taken breadth to be x so we can say that breadth is equal to 57 meters so breadth is equal to 57 meters and what will be the length length is 2 into x so it is 2 into 57 Which is equal to two cents of fourteen. One carry two fives are ten, so ten plus one gives us eleven. So length is hundred and fourteen meters. So we have breadth as fifty-seven meters, length as hundred and fourteen meters. So this is the breadth of the garden, and this is the length of the garden. You can find the perimeter. and check you'll get it to be 342 meters